Jinja Audio Sphere is a multi-channel control room application that allows you to manage multiple multi-channel speaker layouts simultaneously in a way that is very similar to a physical monitor controller. It has been around for a few months and I always wanted to make a video about it, but so far I've never got around to actually do that. However, a few weeks ago, Jinja Audio published an update to Sphere that now includes a plugin which allows us to do Apple Music monitoring with Apple AirPods fully immersively with banal head tracking and everything. What is unique about that particular plugin is that it allows us to do that in 9.1.6 audio. To my knowledge, this is the first application that allows us to do that, so I felt it is now time to have a closer look at Jinja Audio Sphere. So today we are going to use the Apple AirPods for 9.1.6 audio monitoring, fully immersive with banal head tracking. And on top of everything, we are going to use a frequency correction in order to get that to studio quality. So this is going to be fun. Before I get started, two important comments. The first one is that Ginger Audio Sphere is a Mac only application. So while I usually try to make my videos accessible to Windows as well as Mac users, this one is Mac only. Sorry for that. The second comment is that I'm recording this video a couple of weeks before it comes out. This is actually being recorded at the beginning of December 2023. And the release that is most likely going to be mid January 2024. Now there are a lot of things that can happen over six weeks. So if you're watching this video right after it comes out, be aware that the knowledge that went into this video was the knowledge that I had in December 2023. And with that being said, let's hop into our project. The project that I'm going to use today is a continuation of a Adobe Atmos project that we developed in a previous video. And what we did here essentially is that we used Ableton Live in order to create a 7.1.4 Atmos bad track. And then we had also four individual mono objects, or actually two stereo objects that were kind of two tracks, one that I called the call and one that I called the response. So let's just have a brief listen what we have here. So this is the call and everything runs through the Dolby Atmos renderer. So we essentially have four regular objects and then we had four objects that came through the 7.1.4 bed track. Now, if you want to know exactly how we did that, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so that you can check that out. But for this particular video, all we really need is the Dolby Atmos renderer and the capabilities of the Dolby Atmos renderer to render everything in 9.1.6, because that's what we're going to use for Ginger Audio. For the sake of completeness, I wanted to point out that I made a couple of changes to this project. So this is not exactly the same project that we ended up with in the previous video. The things that I changed is that I moved the objects further to the side. And the reason I did it is because I wanted to have some information in the left wide and right wide speakers of a 9.1.6 speaker layout. And then the second thing is that in the output section, I changed the output to the uh, AirPods Max so that I, that I can hear something. And if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I usually do that with a loopback device. And the purpose of this loopback device is really only to duplicate that uh, audio signal. So one part of that audio signal goes into my headphones and the other part goes into the roadcaster so that I can actually record what I'm hearing. And you are hearing exactly the same thing that I'm hearing. But this is really the only reason I'm, I'm using this. Otherwise, you would simply kind of select the AirPods Max. And with that being said, let's make a few changes so that we can monitor 9.1.6 audio and then use a change audio sphere in order to convert it into binaural head tracked audio. Now, there are really two things that I need to do in order to make that happen. The first thing is that I need to make a couple of changes in the Adobe Atmos renderer so that the renderer is actually rendering out 9.1.6 audio. And then I need to set up change audio sphere in order to take in that 9.1.6 audio and convert it into binaural. So let's first make our changes to the Dolby Atmos renderer. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the output device from my current output device to an output device that can output the audio or route the audio from the Dolby Atmos renderer into Jinja Audio Sphere. Now, when you install Jinja Audio in Sphere, it uh, installs three output devices that can handle 16, 32, and 64 channels respectively. Now, we are working with 9.1.6 audio, so 16 channels would technically be enough. However, for reasons that will become apparent a little bit later, we're actually going to use the 32 channel audio device that comes with Sphere. 
So we're going to switch that over from the current output device to Sphere 32. That is the output device that we are going to use. And that one is capable of routing 32 channels from the Dolby Atmos renderer into Jinja Audio Sphere. And then I'm also going to turn off the headphone only mode because I had, I had essentially turned it on for the previous video. And then I'm simply going to say accept and that will change the output device. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to prepare the outputs. So I need to go into the setup and we want to use 9.1.6. Now, when you install the Dolby Atmos renderer, you have a couple of different uh, presets, but none of them is actually 9.1.6. So the first thing we need to do is we need to prepare the Dolby Atmos renderer for 9.1.6 by adding one of uh, a layout, a 9.1.6 layout. And there are a couple of things that we need to do for that. The first thing is we need to add speakers for the 9.1.6 layout. And the speakers that we're going to add are, first of all, left and right wide speakers. And then we're going to add the six overhead speakers, uh, the LFH and RFH, uh, then the middle one and the back one. Now we could technically turn off the uh, speakers that come with the 7.1.4 layout. However, we also can leave them essentially kind of active uh, and uh, that will allow us to actually switch back and forth between the 7.1.4 layout and the 9.1.6 layout. Now, then we need to look at the routing. The routing essentially tells us how the individual channels are routed into the output device. And this is actually the reason why we chose the 32 channel output device because we now can uh, route not only the 16 channels that we have in the 9.1.6 layout, but we can also uh, route the additional four channels in the 7.1.4 layout, which essentially means that we could switch back and forth between this, the uh, 7.1.4 and uh, 9.1.6. However, we need to take note what channels these are routed into. And uh, we see here that the left, left white channel is routed into 13, the right white is routed into channel 14 and then we have the overhead speakers routed into 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And this is going to become relevant once we make the setup in Jinja Audio Sphere because Jinja Audio Sphere needs to take those channels in order to reconstruct the 9.1.6 layout. The final thing that we need to do is we need to add an additional speaker layout and this is done in the monitoring section. So let's uh, hop over to monitoring. Now at the moment, once again, we don't have a 9.1.6 layout, so we're going to add one layout and we're going to call that layout 9.1.6, 9.1.6. And uh, the speakers that we're going to use for that layout are essentially all the speakers with the exception of the four overhead speakers that belong to the 7.1.4 layout. And uh, that essentially is everything. And uh, that essentially now means that if I press accept, I have this additional option and I can now switch over the monitoring from stereo into 9.1.6. And this will create the 16 channel setup for 9.1.6. So with the Adobe Atmos renderer fully prepared, let's now turn our attention to Jinja Audio Sphere. So let's open up Jinja Audio Sphere. And this is essentially a completely empty Jinja Audio Sphere. I have not set anything up. And I'm not going to talk too much about how exactly it works. This is essentially like a monitoring station or like a monitor controller. So it has all the controls that you would usually find in a physical monitor controller. We are really only going to use it in order to convert the 9.1.6 signal into a head tracked by all signal. That's the only reason we are going to use it for. And uh, there are two things that we need to do. We need to define what the input is. And as you can see, you actually have the option of uh, various different types of input. So you could, for example, create one input for the 7.1.4 layout and one input for the 9.1.6 layout and so forth. And we also have a couple of different output options, but we are only going to use one input and one output. So let's first look at our input section. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a 9.1.6 layout. So the input device that I'm going to use is the Sphere 30 32, that's the one. And uh, the layout that I want to use is a 9.1.6 layout. So let's add that. And uh, that essentially now gives me the layout uh, and uh, also the way Jinja Audio expects these channels to come in. Now, the order of these channels, if you remember, is not the order that the Dolby Atmos renderer is sending them out because uh, we actually have more channels uh, that the Dolby Atmos renderer is taking care of because we have this additional four overhead speakers that are coming from the 7.1.4 layout. And we essentially said that the left right and right right speakers, for example, are not coming in at channels 9 and 10. They're instead coming in at channels... Um, 13 and 14. So we're going to just switch those around. And similarly, we said that the overhead channels are coming in at uh, 15 to um, 15, 16, 17, 
16 we have here 17 18 19 and 20 18 19 and 20 so let's uh let's leave that uh, like that at the moment and then what we're going to do is we're also going to uh, change the output uh, and the output uh, let's uh, kind of make a selection here so we need to select the output device once again we could have different outputs now what i'm going to do here is i'm simply going to do the loopback airpods max that's the one that i'm, I'm using here and i'm going to use the stereo version and uh, that essentially kind of now creates the output and at that point i should already hear audio so let me just play the audio from my left set here so as we can see the dolby atmos render is rendering all 16 channels and sphere is receiving them so we see here the channels coming in and we also see that we actually kind of routed them correctly so everything is already reaching Sphere, but at the moment I'm not really rendering that correctly. What I'm really hearing is just the left and the right channel. So let's uh, stop the audio again. So uh, in order to get head tracked by now going, the only thing I need to do now is I need to add the plugin that comes with Ginger Audio Sphere in order to decode the 9.1.6 signal into binaural stereo. And this is done in the input section by simply adding the plugin here. And what we can do is uh, simply add this iRender plugin. And as we can see, the iRender plugin has a couple of different options here. We have the very standard options of uh, choosing either binaural static Binaural Static Personalized, that's uh, the one that uh, where you personalize the height-related transfer function according to the Apple kind of setup. Um, if you've done that, you can actually access that here. And we can also switch it over to Binaural Head Tracking and to Personalized Binaural Head Tracking. Uh, now at that point, uh, I should actually already hear the Binaural Audio. So let's just kind of go back to our live set and let's play the audio again. So as you can see, the audio now comes in here. It is rendered by the iRender plugin. And I can switch over from static to static personalized. You're probably not going to hear a lot of difference there. And then I can also turn on head tracking. So let's just turn on head tracking. The only thing I really need to do is to switch over to binaural head tracking. And if I'm now moving my head, I should actually hear the, or I should be able to kind of change the location of my head position in relationship to the audio. So as you can see, the audio is coming from here. And what you're hearing is exactly the same thing that I'm hearing. And I can also change that over to personalized head related transfer function, which is not going to make a whole lot of sense for you, but for me, it's actually the better experience. Now, this already works extremely well. However, we can do even better than that. We can actually add frequency correction to our headphones so that we can correct all the imperfections of the AirPods Max and get a real studio experience. And the way we're going to do that is by adding Sonarworks to our Sphere setup. Now, this is done very, very simply by just adding the Sonarworks plugin to the output of Ginger Audio Sphere. So let's do that. I'm just going to close the EI Render plugin here. I also don't need that here. And in the output, I also have here a plugin section. So what I can do now is I can simply add the Sonarworks. Uh, so let's just kind of search that. Where do we have it? I have way too many plugins. Okay, so we have Sonarworks reference. And uh, the Sonarworks reference allows us to use a profile for AirPods Max. There are also profiles in Sonarworks for the AirPods Pro, so for the um, IEMs. However, uh, be aware that those profiles don't really are supposed not to be are not supposed to be used for studio purposes. They are just for listening purposes. However, the AirPods Max profile is a studio grade profile, so we can use that, and that essentially com um, corrects any imperfections of the AirPods Max. And uh, let's just have a listen what we have here so um, let's just play the audio again and you now see the audio coming in into the sound ID references and it is now correcting and it is giving me a correct studio experience and once again here I have sort of the input channels the output channels 
There is the iRender plugin on the input to convert 9.1.6 into head track binaural audio. And then there is the Sonarworks plugin on the output in order to correct any frequency imperfections. And that works extremely, extremely well. Now, as you can see, this is actually very simple to set up and works extremely well if you want to use the AirPods Max uh, in particular. This is actually a really, really good option. Now, there are two caveats that I need to make. The first one is that Ginger Audio Sphere is not exactly cheap, so it does cost a little. And if you want to do the Sonarworks trick and kind of do the additional frequency correction, you also need to purchase Sonarworks. So the costs are quite substantial in order to get to that point. And the second thing is that, uh, and that is something that I think is uh, true for any monitoring solution that uses the AirPods Max, the head tracking of the AirPods Max to be exact. And that is there is a little bit of a latency. So be aware that if you use that system, you cannot move your head very, very quickly. That will kind of uh, be a little bit distracting. You usually should kind of move your head slowly in order to allow the system to actually give you the correct head tracking. Uh, now, this is a little bit unfortunate, and I really wished there would be less latency in the head tracking with the AirPods Max. However, it's not a big deal. Uh, you get used to it. Uh, you just need to make sure that you don't move your head too quickly. And that's really everything there is to it. Now, this is all I wanted to say today. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. Embed link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.